Hey guys, I'm Riz Grestar, and how about we watch Ruby Volume 1 Chapter 15 The Stray? As always, make sure to click here to go to the official release first, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and then come back here and we'll watch it together. Last time was what I like to refer to as a four-parter with Jaundice Part 1, or Jaundice Part 1 and 2, and um, Forever Fall Part 1 and 2. And um, I liked, like, the last episode is actually probably one of my favorites so far. I mean, of my favorites, there's like number A and then that one. Um, f you know, no, chapter 14. So, yeah, apparently a lot of people didn't like it, but I I liked it. I thought it was definitely one of the better episodes. Other people talked about how it was the stereotypical bully arc, but that's fine. Like, originality isn't really a thing in today's, like, it's just not a thing anymore. But it's, like, how you present it. And the fact that that, you know, was so true to Jean's character, like, it makes sense that he would have a bully, and it makes sense that there would be a bully in school and all that, so even if it has been used before, the reason that it's used so much is because it's tried and true. I didn't expect anything, like, really transformative from Ruby as a show, and so, like, that part didn't strike me as bad, that it was a bully, you know, just another bully episode kind of thing, so it didn't bother me. What bothered me was that it did take four chapters in order to actually, like, reach a satisfying conclusion, so while the last one is one of my favorite episodes so far, um, kind of a shame that it took three chapters before that like just to build up to that point um but yeah this one who knows what's gonna happen but it's the second to last chapter in volume one and so it has to start wrapping things up i assume because i assume the end of volume one is gonna have some sort of bigger thing so what i assume from this is that i can't remember in which episode but in one of them we saw the one red haired mafia boss kind of dude you know and he had like this map of a, you know it was a plan of some sorts and bits were crossed out and uh, beacon was uh, circled so i assume that this you know it's not a two-parter but i assume that this episode and then the next is gonna be about him like attacking the school or something you know i just imagine they have to go somewhere with that already but maybe not maybe they're gonna wait clear until volume two or three but i don't know but if i had to guess about something happening it would be that actually adding or leading up to something so I don't know, I guess we'll have to see. But yeah, with that said then, let's get to watching. Three, two, one, play. Yeah, volume one's almost over. Like, I'm excited for it. And I really do hope that there is something that really makes it clear like, yeah, this is the end of a volume. This is a big significant thing, you know? It doesn't need to be, like, absolutely mind-blowing, but I hope it's just not, like, another episode, you know what I mean? Like, I want it to be significant in some manner, so we'll see what happens. Alright, Ruby, here we go. Oh, that looks nice. It's all festive and stuff. <laughs> They're just walking down the street with weapons and everything. Wonderful. I don't think I've ever seen you smile this much, Weiss. It's kind of weirding me out. <laughs> How could Ruby. you not smile? A festival dedicated to the cultures of the world. That's what vital dances, is. Dances, parades, a tournament. Oh, the amount of planning and organization that goes into this event is simply breathtaking. Oh. You really know how to take a good thing and make it sound boring. Right, <laughs> you. Remind me again why we're spending our Friday afternoon visiting the stupid docks. Oh, they smell like fish. Well, probably because fish live there. Visiting from Vacua will be arriving by ship today. And as a representative of Beacon, I feel as though it is my solemn duty to welcome them to this fine kingdom. Uh huh. She wants to spy on them so she'll have the upper hand in the tournament. <laughs> uh, you can't prove that. Whoa. <laughs> what? Oh. That place. Yeah, they were not light on the tape there. <laughs> what happened here? Robbery. Second dust shot to be hit this week. You know what it's this like. Turned into a jungle. <laughs> Ugh, that's terrible. They left all the money again. Huh? Yeah, it just doesn't make a lick of sense. Who needs that much dust? I don't know. An army? You thinking the uh White Fang? Yeah, I'm thinking we don't get paid enough. Hmm. The White Fang. What do you mean? Thing? Who does who what needs that much dust? Isn't dust parents? everything? What's your problem? My problem? I simply don't care for the criminally insane. The hmm. White Fang is hardly a bunch of psychopaths. They're a collection of misguided faunists. Misguided? Oh, they're faunists? They want to wipe humanity oh. off the face of the planet. So then they're very misguided. <laughs> Either way, it doesn't explain why they would rob a dust shop in the middle of downtown Vale. Hmm. Blake's got a point. Besides, the police never caught that Torchwick guy I ran into a few months ago. Maybe it was him. 
That still doesn't change the fact that the White Fang are a bunch of scum. Those Faunas only know how to lie, cheat, and steal. That's not necessarily true. I want to know hey, what more what Blake has to say on this. That person has a tail. <laughs> Thanks for the ride, guys. <laughs> He's a monkey. Hmm. You no good stowaway. I hey, was right. No good stowaway would have been caught. I'm a great stowaway. You opened your banana wrong, sir. Hey, get down from there this instant. <laughs> <laughs> that was the weirdest flip like forward but flipping sideways <laughs> doesn't seem very efficient you know like at least he's flipping forward because momentum trip him trip oh <laughs> well okay well Lois, you wanted to see the competition and there it goes quick we have to observe him I don't think she's opposed to that. <laughs> oh. Is that Nora? I just thought I saw orange hair. No, he got away. Uh. Nope. Weiss. That's not her. Bah! Salutations. Um. Hello. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm wonderful. Oh. Thank you for asking. Do you want to get up? Do you want to get up? This <laughs> Yes. That's great. Oh, gang, you and me. My name is Penny. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hi, Penny. Hi, Penny. <laughs> I'm Ruby. I'm Wise. Blake. Are you sure you didn't hit your head? <laughs> oh, I'm Yang. It's a pleasure to meet you. You already said that. So I did. <laughs> well, sorry for running into you. Take care, friend. Bye, Penny. All right. It was odd. She was weird. Now, where did that Faunus riffraff run off to? What did you call me? Oh, I'm really sorry. I definitely didn't think you heard me. <laughs> no, not you. You. Me? Uh, Wait, what? I, I don't know I, what I, um, uh... You called me friend. Oh. Am I really your friend? Um. <laughs> there was a no. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Sensational. We can paint our nails and try on clothes and talk about cute boys. Mm, oh, that this poor this lonely girl. Like when you met me? No, she seems far more coordinated. So, <laughs> what are you doing in Vale? I'm here to fight in the tournament. Ah. Wait, you're fighting in the tournament? I'm combat. Well, of course, she's not a silhouette. Forgive me, but you hardly look the part, says the girl wearing a dress. <laughs> it's a combat skirt. Hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. Is that actually a skirt, though? Isn't a dress all one thing the and the skirt is only Does at the that waist mean down? You know that monkey tailed just, just saying. The who? The filthy faunus from the boat. <laughs> oh. Why do you keep saying that? Huh? Stop calling him a rapscallion. Stop calling him a degenerate. He's a person. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like me to stop referring to the trash can as a trash can? Or this lamppost as a lamppost? She's quite stop racist. It. Stop what? He clearly It's like Fire the Emblem law. Path of Radiance or Radiant Dawn, I don't remember which. He'll probably join up with those other But with the Lagoos. Ugh, you ignorant little rat! How dare <laughs> she you talk saunters to me like off. that? A teammate you are a judgmental little girl what in the world makes you say that the uh, mere fact i think that you would we should that probably go oh. where are we going Solely based on his species makes you just as much of a scoundrel as you believe him to be so you admit it the white thing is just a radical group of terrorists that's not what i meant and you know it i don't understand why this is oh causing they're such still a arguing problem. that is the problem you realize you're defending an organization that hates humanity don't you the faunus of the White Fang are pure evil. There's no such thing as pure evil. Why do you think they hate humanity so much? It's because of people like Cardin, people like you, that forced the White Fang to take such drastic measures. People like me? You're just. I really want to know Blake's connection to faunus. Because I feel like that's more than just her feeling strongly. I feel like there's something why else. I despise the White Fang. Why I don't particularly trust the faunus? 
It's because they've been at war with my family for years. War as an actual bloodshed. My grandfather's company has had a target painted across its back for as long as I can remember. And ever since I was a child, I've watched family friends disappear. Because of the Board dust? members executed. An entire train car full of dust stolen. And every day, my father would come home furious. And that made for a very difficult childhood. Probably what would, yeah. I... No! You want to know why I despise the white thing? It's because they're a bunch of liars, thieves, and murderers. Well, maybe we were just tired of being pushed around. We? Oh, you hear that? I... I... I thought that was Ruby's semblance. Is that why she wears a bow like a kitty cat? That's why she wears I knew a bow you would like look a better without the bow. <laughs> cool. I'm still surprised the beds are holding up like that. Oh. She's been gone all weekend. Blake's a big girl. I'm sure she can handle herself. <laughs> Weiss, come on. She's one of our teammates. Is she? We all heard what she said. Weiss, maybe she is, maybe she isn't. Either way, she's missing, and we need to find her. A member of the White Fang, right underneath our noses. I just hope she's okay. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have to worry. She's okay. No reason to have the audience, you know, curious about it. So... You want to know more about me? Yes. Yes, I do. Created by Monty Owen. R.I.P., man. R.I.P. Waiting for the credits now. And then we'll carry on. Alright. I was just kidding. There's a little bit more. Because pre-order now, November 12th. The, yeah. Anyway. Alright, so this episode was 10 minutes and 41 seconds long, and now it's time to talk about it. So, I would have to say that this is actually another one of my favorite episodes. Um, part of it, hey, due to the length, what do you know? And part of it too, because it actually is setting up some really interesting things. Like, it's more than just character introductions at this point, which thank goodness we're finally past. Now it's actually moving on to like more in-depth character backstory and interaction and actually delving deeper into the lore and everything, where apparently... Like, I didn't think that the racism, you know, between the humans and the Faunus was that big of a thing. Um, I just thought that it was because, like, Cardin, you know, and his team were bullies. I just thought that's why the rabbit girl was picked on at school and everything. But, um, but apparently Blake is also a fun And I find that really cool. Like, Blake currently is one of my favorite characters. Like, right up there with Jean. It's Jean and Blake. Like, I still don't know a lot about Blake, and I would like to know more. And I'm really looking forward to it because... Based upon how this episode ended, I assume in the next episode, the end of Volume 1, obviously, um, we're going to learn more about Blake, and so I am actually, like, super hyped for that, and that'll be cool, because I've... Like, I always liked Blake, you know, upon first seeing her and everything, um, and then with her interaction with Ruby and Yang when she was reading her book, you know, when they were in their kind of co-ed dorm sort of area, um, but I didn't know enough about Blake to really say that I really liked her, but at this point, I think that it's safe to say that I do, and I want to know more to see whether that changes or not, you know what I mean? So that was, that was cool. But yeah, the racism definitely did surprise me. Um, but, you know, I guess when you do have things like Weiss's backstory, you know, it makes sense enough, like, okay, it makes sense that Weiss then would have all of these negative feelings toward, um, Faunus. Or like, you know, the White Fang, but even Faunus in general. 
Um, but it doesn't mean that I have to like the fact that Weiss, you know, hates them. Um, so I can understand it, but it doesn't mean I have to like it. They're two different things, and I bring that up just because, you know, that could apply to other things in the future. Um, or even other things that I previously spoke about in the past, hence previously. But yeah, I don't know what to expect, you know, learning more about Blake and whatnot, but I'm looking forward to it. And I actually, um... It did cross my mind before that Blake might be a Faunus, especially just at the, you know, the earlier parts of this episode, but I didn't, basically I didn't want to commit and actually come out and say it. I just knew that she had a bigger connection than just someone who, like, felt sympathy for them, but, um, and I actually was thinking of ears, but I was thinking, no, that's just the bow and its resemblance to ears making me think that, but apparently it actually was. So. That's cool. You know, I'm not trying to take credit where I don't deserve it because I didn't like figure it out ahead of time or anything, but you know, I'm just happy that like it wasn't a complete mind-blowing thing. It was just a cool revelation. So yeah, no idea who that monkey boy is and uh, Penny seems an interesting character so far, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see, you know, what happens in the next episode and in volume two to actually find out more. I don't know. Oh, and just back to the thing where the police officers are like, I don't know who would need so much dust. From what I've read in the comments, dust is like everything, you know? Like, the energy source for bloody everything. So who wouldn't need all of the dust they can get their hands on, you know? Free energy, like, that's ridiculous, you know, to run cars. And that's really the only thing I can remember right now, but it sounded very important according to the comments, and so I'm not surprised personally, but apparently, they were, which I find weird considering they live in that world, they exist among everything that uses that, and yet me as an outsider would be like, I feel like this is a pretty big deal, that's not too surprising to me, I don't know. Maybe I'm misunderstanding things, because like I said, I am an outsider, and maybe I misunderstood comments or I'm misremembering, but it was weird to me that they took that like so lightly. I don't know, I mean, aside from the, the numerous strips of tape that they used, it seemed like they took it pretty lightly, so. I thought that was weird. But the rest of this episode I really did enjoy, mostly because we did get to see more into Blake's backstory, but we do get to see a setup for Vital, you know, the festival, which is interesting. But another interesting thing that I feel I should point out is that throughout Volume 1 we've had a lot of Part 1 and Part 2s where I feel like they should have gone together, but not just them, usually the Part 1 and Part 2 along with another Part 1, maybe another Part 2 for one episode. Um, this one is not a part one. This, again, is just the stray, but, um, it's, it, it kind of behaved in the same way that the other episodes had, where it didn't, I mean, like, I don't see why chapter 16 shouldn't be the stray part two. It just seems kind of weird for me. So, I don't know, but, yeah, it, I don't know, it just strikes me as odd, and I can't say why exactly they made that distinction. So, I don't know, I'm just gonna have to shrug and go with it. But I think that I've said all that is coming to mind for this chapter, so let me know what you guys think about this chapter in the comments below. Again, don't spoil anything about the future, but you can talk about this episode and everything behind it. So, pretty much all of Volume 1 at this point. And with that, we're calling it here. Cue outro, go!